Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. We continue to preview the college football season in 2022, and today's stop is Bluefield, Virginia. We get to visit with the head coach of the Bluefield Rams, Coach Dewey Lusk. Coach, your team last year, it, it was like a number of other schools that, that had seasons that were just bisected, and, and yours really was as well. You start off the season one and five, then midpoint, and you take over from there, five and oh, you carry a five-game winning streak into this year. I know that that in and of itself is probably a positive. Can you bring us up to speed on where you are? Well, Joey, you know, we took this thing up. This will be our sixth sixth season as a staff coming up this year. And we took this thing over five years ago. And and, uh, and Bluefield was 5-50 and 50 the previous five years. So you can only imagine we had a mountain to climb. We got here in January of 17 and wondered what we had gotten into. Uh, but... <laughs> You know, with with a great coaching staff, we got Mike Ketchum, our offensive coordinator. I have 37 years college experience. Mike Ketchum, a good buddy of mine, he's at, going on 44. Uh, our defensive coordinator, Dino Kaklis, he's he's got 26 years up under his belt. And both Coach Ketchum and Coach Kaklis have been small college head coaches, coordinators, athletic directors. So we've got great experience. So we knew what we had in front of us. And uh, we've just kept recruiting. And the key to this whole thing is retention, keeping people around. And, and, and then once you can keep folks around and gain some experience, then you got to learn how to win. So yeah. last year, finally, we're sitting there at one and five. We had beaten a really good Emory and Henry team, came from behind. We were 21 down with uh, five minutes to go and came from behind and went for two at the end and beat them 46-45. And that was kind of special because I went to school there and, and coached there for 15 years. So that was a very interesting uh, a reunion, to say the least. Uh, and then, you know, we had opportunities to beat Faulkner and Thomas Moore last year, didn't get it done, but we didn't quite know how to win up here. You know, I just, uh, we weren't quite ready. Then we went to Reinhardt, and Reinhardt's got a tremendous football team. And we didn't show up and play very well in the first half, but the second half, they didn't score, and we hung 35, and the next thing you know, it's a 49-35 ball game, and the kids left the field, and it's like, we can beat these guys. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we can play with them. And, 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 and then from then on, we won our next five, and, and, you know, I was just sitting there on the sideline watching the kids, and, and it was just something to watch. They believed. They, they believed in what we were doing. They believed in each other. Uh, and, and we've got all those kids back and, you know, we've kind of been waiting on this, you know, those years I was at Emory and Henry and we had many, many winning seasons and conference championships and went to the division three playoffs several times. And there was no secret to the success. It was keep, have juniors and seniors and have the juniors and seniors teach the freshmen and sophomores. And, and, uh, and that's kind of what's happening here. And, and you had mentioned Jaquan Ebron, what a talent. Uh, a wide receiver, first team All American last year, uh, the uh, Appalachian Division Offensive uh, Player of the Year, 80 catches, right at 1,500 yards, 16 touchdowns. Uh, he's a coach on the field. If he's wanting to play, he'll he'll call a play. Not necessarily for him. He 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 just understands what's going on, and uh, so you better listen. Uh, but a tremendous young man, a tremendous talent, and then. Then you've got a Matt Trevelyan right beside him, a 6'4 receiver who was uh, an All-American tight end uh, last year. He played our inside spot, and he had 47 catches and I think seven touchdowns, over 500 yards, and he returns. Uh, and our quarterback, you couldn't do it without a quarterback, and that's where it starts, Nathan Hurstitch, and how fortunate we were to get him. Uh, you know, as we all know, you need a trigger man, and he was sitting at Upper Iowa. He was at a D2 school. He's 5'9". Well, you know, most of us coaches, we usually outcoach ourselves. You know, no, <laughs> most folks uh, don't want to play a 5'9 quarterback. But you'd want to play this cat if you saw his arm and his quick release and his smarts. And, uh, you know, he, he in his first year playing, he about broke every career record here. Uh, but but he's back with three more years and, and just a tremendous leader and, and – and we hope folks will blitz us because he gets it out of his hand pretty quick and understands his hot reads. Uh, 
But then if you got a pretty good quarterback, you got to have pretty good linemen. And uh, and we're fortunate we've got juniors and seniors up front, and Termaine Baker, an all conference performer returning. And what's kind of we kind of stumbled onto him. He's he's now 5'11, 250 pounds, but when he came in here, he was about 215, 220. He came from a high school, uh, Lake Taylor, up in uh, Virginia Beach, Norfolk area. And they're traditionally a small team that likes to hit you. And they're going to run the ball every snap, and they're going to line 11 up on defense, and they come every snap. So we just didn't think he was quite big enough to to play uh, offensive line. So we, we were trying him at an H-back tight end type, you know. Well, he wasn't skillful enough to catch the ball, and I like to throw the football. Uh, but he could block. So when we run out of offensive linemen during the week and don't have enough, we'll move our tight, you know, they're in class or they're injured or whatever the deal may be. Uh, we'll stick our tight ends at tackle and uh, to get through practice. Well, we kind of put him, it was one of those days, and we we're down to four or five guys. So we stuck our two or three tight ends in there. Coach Ketchum comes back and said, I believe we found the best offensive lineman we have. I said, who are you talking about? He said, Termaine Baker. And, uh, well, the rest is history. We were playing Reinhardt in his freshman year uh, after we had made the move. And uh, Coach Miller came up to me before the game and goes, who's number 69? He's the smallest lineman on the field. But you talking about strong and can move and gets on people. And he he's just been amazing. And, and we've got him on the left side to help protect that uh, backside blind side of the quarterback. Tim Weldon returns, a math major, tremendously smart. Uh, Anthony Murray from down in Alabama, just a, a, a great kid. So Antoine Shaw, Josh Wright, I just go on and on. But these kids have made a commitment. They've been here four or five years. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to have all this on paper because we've all done it and I've been there and done that. <laughs> uh, but this team has a chance to be successful. It really does. And, and obviously it depends on how hard they've worked this summer. We don't have enough money to keep them here. So they're at home and, and working hard, but there's just a special vibe about this group. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to getting it rolling. Coach, it's, it's just so enjoyable to get to listen to you talk and talk about doing it the right way and building it up and just the consistency and, and continuing to recruit and bring in players and let the upperclassmen teach them. We're speaking with Coach Dewey Lusk here on Midwest Sports Net. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. We would appreciate that as we continue to cover small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond as we're talking about the Bluefield Rams. And we, we've already had a couple of videos on the channel a little bit earlier this summer in which we had a chance to highlight Herstich and Ebron. But let's talk about that defense just a little bit, Coach. I mean, you, you have some big shoes to fill. It's Marcus Wimbush having moved on, but you have Sam Kirtley, a grad student, coming back, and, and he's the leading returning tackler, had uh, 89 tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, three of those sacks as well. So uh, take us through the defense just a bit. Well, you know, obviously we want our numbers to improve defensively, but, you know, in, in, in our defense's defense, you know, we're <laughs> facing some pretty good offenses uh, as well as we play on here, and, and that's going to continue to be the case as, as we progress into this 2022 season. But Sam Kirtley, a tremendous leader, graduate student, he's going to end up being in special forces. He's going to be one of those kind of – one of uh, those kids and and he'll be a great leader for us on that defense and and, and to demarcus wimbush you can't replace a kid like that i mean he's all-time leading tackler he's been a two-time all-american uh just and a great person uh you know when we first got here poor demarcus his grades weren't very good and we had him in uh what we affectionately call the penalty box and the penalty box was for folks that uh, grades weren't very good. And I, I, I manned that early in the morning while Coach Cackless manned the weight room. And uh, and I'll never forget, DeMarcus came up to me and said, I'm going to be my, be your starting linebacker next fall. I said, not with those grades, you're not, you know. And But let me take from then on out, 3.0, 3.5, the rest of the way, you know. So that was his, his motivation. Uh, but – it led to be an example for our other kids. And that's what was uh, awesome about it. And, and you know, Sam Kirtley's going to just step right in and do a wonderful job. We got Tavarius Corbett 
from down at uh, Miami, Florida. He's coming back and a great kid. Uh, Bo Nindala, he, he really came on last year and he'll just be a sophomore next year. So we're looking for big things out of him. Uh, Logan Patron, uh, he'll be a, a fifth year guy that uh, uh, has been a defensive end. We moved him to outside backer in the spring. He's a rangy 230 pound kid, can move and athletic. And we're looking for big things out of him up front, you know, and it all starts up front. You're only as good as as you are up front. And we've got a young man from Chicago, College of DePage, uh, Jackson Charlton Perrin, uh, and he's back. And he's a big side of a mountain, just a, a, a tough-nosed uh, kid that works at it very hard. Kayshawn Ridgel, a senior from Florida, another defensive lineman that's in the program for the fourth year. Uh, also, we've got uh, Kyle Orris, who redshirted last year. He's a long snapper defensive lineman, very intelligent, and we're, we're looking for a lot of things out of him this coming year. Jaden Campbell, another rangy defensive lineman that can move and run and, and, uh, and, and looking forward to watching him play. Secondary, you mentioned K.D. Fanazzi earlier. Uh, K.D. had been hurt and hadn't had an opportunity to play a whole lot and uh, finally got uh, healthy and got to play a full season last year, had several interceptions, probably dropped as many in the first half of the year as he had in the second half, which he could have led the country in picks if he'd have called them all. Uh, I told him, I said, that's why you're not over there with me at wide out, you know. But anyhow, he's a great young man. And uh, now his confidence is, uh, he's just exuding confidence right now. And so we're looking forward to see uh, the plays he can make. We've got twins on the team, uh, Mikhail and Marik Banks, and they're both in the secondary. I can't tell them apart. They're just twin one and twin two. Uh, they, they say there's a way to tell them apart, but I haven't figured that out. But super kids from uh, down uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they have a lot of experience. They are special teams warriors. They come in, they play safety, corner, they, you know, whatever you need, they're going to do it. But uh, there's a, a lot of great kids in that group. And and that's what you have to have to have a good team. Now, obviously, you got to have some talent. You got to have a quarterback in that. But you also have to have a team that that likes one another and, and wants to play for one another. And 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 I think we have have that going on right now. And and hopefully uh it bodes well for us opening up against Thomas Moore because the first part of our schedule, whoo, Thomas Moore at Thomas Moore at Georgetown, and then you're going to have a hungry Emory and Henry team coming up in here on September 10th. So we've got a tremendous schedule. We have a tremendous challenge in front of us, but it's a challenge uh, that, you know, we're looking forward to. Coach, it's been just so much fun listening to to you talk about the team, and, and I'm looking forward. We're going to be following you here on Midwest Sportsnet, and just to remind the Rams fans, August 27th, that's when the season gets underway. Again, now that one's at Thomas Moore, so it's on the road. Then the next game, as you mentioned, at Georgetown, on the road September 3rd. It's September 10th when Rams fans get their first opportunity to get to see this team playing at home and that against Emory and Henry. And one other thing, Coach, that it's not the Mid-South Conference schedule this year. It's an Appalachian Athletic Conference schedule this year. Things are just a little bit different, but still basically the same schedule, Some, most of the same teams. We, Yeah, and, and we still, even though we're not Mid-South, we still have an agreement that we play with the Mid-South games. And so that's why, you know, early on there at the early part of the season when when we have Georgetown and Thomas Moore and Pikeville and those folks, they're still in the Mid-South. So we have an agreement. So it, it hasn't changed a whole lot. It's just that now we represent the Appalachian Athletic Conference in its entirety. And, and uh, so NAIA football, Mid-South, AAC, it is great football with great kids and, 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 and to me playing for the right spirit of the way you're supposed to play the game. You're here to get a degree and, and uh, we don't have enough money to do that name, image and likeness kind of thing. You know, we just hope to get enough in their financial aid package so they can make it through the registration line. Uh, but uh, it's a joy to watch these kids play because they love to play the game. And, and, you know, I've been you know, we're texting back and forth right now. It's paperwork time. And, they want more paperwork than Carter's got liver pills. You know, back when I played, 
you coughed once and took a salt tablet and you was ready to go. Now it takes four days. You got to get them in here and fill out all this paperwork. And then you get to practice, hopefully, if the trainer allows you, you know. And uh, but it's like when we're texting back, the kids can't wait to get back out there and be together. And, and you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about is it's being together and learning a few things and uh, trying to be a better person. Coach Dewey Lusk with the Bluefield Rams. Thank you very much, sir, for taking time with us today here as we continue to preview the 22 college football season here on Midwest Sportsnet and success to the Rams this year. Thank you, Joe, and we appreciate all that you're doing to promote small college football. Thank you so much.